Let's start with Ridley, who I've not seen for a long time. But it, 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 Antigua is such a, f a brilliant cricketing country, producing amazing cricketers. But until you came along, I guess probably not much in the way of wicket keepers. Really? I mean, you kind of broke the mould, really, from the fast bowlers and the, and the batting. What, what, what got you into keeping? Um, at an early age, you know, about 15 or so, I've decided to play cricket and watching the older guys play. There was a wicketkeeper, and they asked me to assist. And from there on, I started wicketkeeping and enjoy it. Yeah, it's funny, that's how so many seem to start to me, that they say, you're not batting or bowling, have, have, a, have a go. And you come from Sweets, is that right? You're born in Sweets. Very famous, if you've been to Antigua, these people, a home of the great Kirtley. And the formidable Mrs. Kirtley with her bell outside the house that she rings, or did ring, when he got a wicket. Great place, lovely village, and that's, that's kind of what West Indies cricket's all about, a little community like that. Yes, I think, you know, we in the West Indies play cricket very passionately, and Mrs. Ambrose, every time we play for our country, our clubs, she's always there supporting us with a bell, so that is one support we know we get every time we, we play cricket in Sweden and for Antigua. Yeah. Do you still feel that now? Do you think it's still there? Is that passion still there in the, in the West Indies? I honestly think so. The thing is that we're now winning a lot of games, but I, I, I think that a lot of people still relish and, and like to see West Indian play cricket. Yeah, that's for sure. We like, we like coming out there, so make sure please things keep going well. Yes, yeah, one of the best tours, obviously, Ridley. Thank you. Say hello to Mrs. Ambrose for me. When next night, I will. Okay. <laughs> Matt. Um, Talking of the West Indies, I think it's fair to say, and you can, get, you can kick me down if you like, but actually you had quite a tough start, didn't you? And it was in the West Indies on some pretty difficult pitches, ball bouncing twice and lots of buys, and you went away and you worked seriously hard after, after that tour. Yeah, it was, you know, there were some tricky times, tricky pitches, as you say, ball keeping low, but also I was rubbish. Um, <laughs> and... It, it isn't any simpler than that. Um, and I, what I had to do, I, you know, like a lot of players, I think you come in, you maybe get found out, you go out again, and then it's, it's what you do with, with your time decisions you make. Um, and I made um, a decision that saved my career, and that was to start working with a man that's in this room, Bruce French. Um, right. And he and I... Um, formed a, a, a bond, really, through, through hard work on the training ground, the stuff that people wouldn't see, the hours that you put in. And I started seeing improvements, um, and th that's where it from, went from, really. But I, you know, honestly, Bruce French, wherever you are, mate, thank you very much. No, that's excellent. Do you feel, as a keeper, quite isolated? I mean, if you do make a mistake, you see it on the telly, you've got know, cameras on you all the time, because it, it is quite a lonely job, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible, um, especially now with high motion, slow motion, super motion, and the you know, replays about 15 times of every mistake you make. Um, I was talking to someone at the table, actually. That's why I always have my sunnies on, because I just found that I could hide behind them. You know, you make a mistake. Or you, you just hide behind your glasses. It's your bit where you just felt you could shut the rest of the world out. But as a wicketkeeper, making a mistake, dropping a catch, it's just awful. Because if you bat and you get out, it's your own fault, and off you walk and you sulk in the dressing room. But... You drop a catch, you're letting down the bowlers, you're letting down the fielders. Well, guys would have wanted to go and have their lunch, you know, and everything else. And he just felt <laughs> so responsible. It was, it, it was the worst feeling in the world. Yeah, yeah. Mark, you've had some great bowlers to keep wicket too as well, haven't you? I mean, I'm looking at, well, the, the, the pace attack, Donald, Pollock, and Teeny Stain, of course, who's, who's still doing the best. How, how would you compare, compare those four? Yeah, look, they were all fantastic bowlers. Um, you know, I was, I was very fortunate to, to be a keeper to, to all those fantastic bowlers as well, but the one standout bowler for me was Dale Stone. Um, I think uh, from a pace perspective, um, also from a skill perspective, but Dale's just got something different than any other bowler I've ever kept to. He's got white line fever. When he steps over the white line, he wants to kill a, a batter. And uh, we often used to try to wind him up in, in certain sort of ways. I'll never forget a game um, that we played against Pakistan in, in, at Newlands. And uh, he bowled a half volley in his second spell. And Mohamed Yusuf hit him to the boundary for four. And uh, Graham Smith said to me, listen, just go chat to Dale. Go wind him up a bit. And I went to Dale, said to him, uh, Dale, listen, I think you, you're pivoting a bit wrong. 
and that's why you're not getting much turn on the ball. <laughs> he looked at me and said, a... he looked at me and said to me, he said, uh, Bouch, just go do your job and I'm going to do my job. Next <laughs> ball, bowled a half volley, got hit to the boundary for four again. So then I sort of ran up to him, I said, Dale, listen, I'll pull your finger out your ass, champ. Um, we got a game to win you. And he just looked at me and he said to me, best you guys move a couple of meters back. Well, the next two balls hit the Pakistan badge and uh, he nicked him off the third ball. Um, but yeah, Dale's one of those guys who just, he wanted to do, he wanted to kill a, a batsman. And, uh, and he's got, he's it's got a very got... nice trait to have when you're being a keeper, yes. not when you're a batter. And he'll keep going for a while? Yeah, look, I think um, if you're looking at our, our setup at the moment in South Africa, um, to have Dale staying back in form bowling for South Africa is, is fantastic. Yeah. You've also, I reckon, we've talked about some wonderful bowlers that all these great keepers have kept to. You must have kept the most unusual bowler that possibly has ever been in Test cricket. Paul Adams. What did you think when you first saw that? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Paul, yeah, they, what do they call him? A frog in a blender. Frog in a blender. <laughs> Gogi, he's a, yeah, he's a strange, strange character. Um, it's, that's about as much as I can say about him, right? <laughs> wow. But uh, yeah, he is, he is quite different at, uh, to keep to. Um, you know, the guys are talking about, Alan, Alan is talking about certain things that you pick up in a bowler's action where you're privileged enough to, to keep to a bowler for a long period of time. You just pick up little di different things. And, and I used to know straight away just when he put the ball in his hand which delivery he's going to bowl. And uh, I couldn't tell you what I was looking for, but I just saw something different that I can't knew it is the one that is going to turn in. Um, but yeah, you know, difficult guy to coach. Yeah. Um, sometimes you just got to let the guys like him, uh, guys like Malinga, just got to say to them, just go do what you do. Okay. Uh, you're different and, and that makes you unique. I must mention that obviously you're, you're evidence of the dangers of keeping wicket uh, and what can happen. Would you urge kids to wear helmets, everyone to wear helmets? I mean, what, what, and what, what state are you, are you in yeah, at the look, moment? Look, my situation, um, it was unfortunate. Um, if I was wearing a helmet, which guys generally do today, probably wouldn't have mattered. Uh, probably had to be wearing glasses at the time. Uh, it was raining a bit, so I took the glasses off. But yeah, I think there's certain things that, that we could do to try and protect players, um, and not only wicket keepers, but bowlers as well. Um, when they run back to the stumps and the bales are flying around, but you know what? It is what it is. It's, it's sports injuries. It's not only happening in cricket, it's happening in rugby and football, whatever. Um, you just got to deal with it. And you know, often people say to me, say, how have you dealt with the whole sort of blow? Um, guys like on stage uh, earlier, um, you look at that and you go, I'm actually pretty well off. And, uh, you know, I don't have, I don't have any issues. Uh, I'm pretty happy. I think that's... Uh that's where we'll leave it. Thanks to Mark Boucher, Matt Pryor, and Ridley Jacobs. Thank you very much indeed, gents. Lovely to see you all.